Well, I was setting up a new business and uh, I basically sowed the seeds for the cyber attack against me two years before it happened. Um, I was not interested in matters cyber. Um, there was nothing in the media uh, or in my business advisors. Nobody mentioned the potential cyber threats to my business. So I didn't have a cyber strategy or security plan. And I engaged the services of a web designer on the recommendation of a friend. So I didn't do any due diligence. I liked the website he designed. And he played the long game. And we became very friendly. And he was very knowledgeable in matters IT. And I was happy to confess my ignorance uh, that I wasn't interested in IT matters and matters cyber. And so he very kindly, what I thought, offered to take that off my hands. So he purchased my domain names, he set up my personal and corporate emails on his servers, and he set up my social media accounts. And he did very well. I had no complaint about the services at all. He set up my Twitter account. And then, unfortunately, due to personal circumstances, my husband became ill. And at that time, uh, he moved the goalposts. And he said that I needed a new website, as my, uh, the website he designed was vulnerable to hacking. I didn't realize that this was because of the uh, development software he'd used. Um, I said I couldn't cope with it because my husband was ill. And then um, he said that uh, if I didn't have a new website, that my website was so uh, vulnerable that it could contaminate and pull down the other websites on his servers. That frightened me. My husband, unfortunately, had just died. And so um, I just said, yes, tiredness and grief sort of overcame the ability to think quickly or properly. Um, he designed another site. He offered me a special price. Uh, I paid it, but when the site went live, he demanded uh, an initial, uh, an extra five days, uh, uh, five days uh, fee, uh, sorry, money for five days' work that I hadn't authorised. When I disputed it, uh, he sent me threats to tell me to pay up or test me, if you will. Um, I refused to pay up because I wanted a breakdown of what monies had been incurred. And when I disputed that and protested it, um, I didn't realize that he had all, I knew he had all my passwords, but I didn't know what he could do. And so I found myself locked out of my personal website, my corporate website. Uh, I couldn't access my personal emails or my corporate emails. And he also seized control of my social media accounts. So, so what happened then and what was the effect on your business? Uh, I couldn't trade. I was absolutely devastated. He also posted false, uh, he po instead of my websites, uh, web pages on my home pages he just put one page up saying that I was a persistent debtor and an active debtor and that I was a high risk person to do business with. Um, he then, uh, I had photographs on the uh, internet and he put his logo between uh, my photographs on the internet and anybody that clicked on that would be taken again to another defamatory word uh, uh, web page about me. Um, and I had clients ringing me up uh, saying, did I owe money? It was absolutely frightening the fact he could email clients on my behalf and potentially post um, messages on Facebook, which in fact is what he did. He actually hacked into my Twitter account and posted offensive messages to him purportedly from me, so I was impersonated. So what happened to the business? Uh, I lost the business completely. I tried setting up another business using the same brand, but unfortunately he came after that too, and I made uh, two further attempts to set up business, and he came after those saying me and those companies were also persistent and active debtors, and I was not to do, uh, nobody was to do business with me, which is quite devastating. And he did this on a daily basis. He also used my brand to um, set up, uh, purchased another domain using my brand and he registered that at my home address. Uh, and it was just a nightmare. It was constant harassment. I had numerous emails from him. As fast as I set up a different email address, he'd come after that too. I mean, one morning I had over 43 emails by 11 o'clock in the morning and they were very offensive and personally quite distressing at a time I was vulnerable. So what's your message to businesses today? Uh, let me be a lesson to you. I didn't take cyber security seriously. I thought that passwords and antivirus was sufficient to keep me protected. It wasn't. I didn't have cyber liability insurance. In fact, I wasn't aware of it. Uh, so my advice to, and, and even my business advisors didn't alert me to that. So my advice to everybody is there's a free open university course on cyber security. There's Get Safe Online. Make yourself cyber savvy. If the very least you do, do from this interview here is please just change your passwords regularly and have a different password for every account. I handed myself to my cyber attacker on a plate, mainly because of the same passwords. 
Uh, so it, cyber security is essential these days. I understand on government figures there's now over a thousand cyber attacks uh, an hour in the UK and three out of four small businesses like me have been hit and are being hit. As a, as a former lawyer, um, are the law enforcement agencies equipped to deal with this sort of crime? Not presently. Cybercrime is going faster than uh, law enforcement training and resourcing. Uh, only three forces in the country at the moment, per uh, Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary figures, are trained. So this is another, uh, another feature that needs to be addressed urgently, the need for police training. I didn't get the support uh, and help that I needed because of lack of training. But I will say that the issue has probably grown faster than uh, you know, awareness. In Gloucestershire, more resources are being put into cybercrime and, and cyber safety. Uh, you would welcome that? I absolutely welcome it. It's absolutely essential. Yes, this is very, uh, very much needed. And uh, Gloucestershire are to be congratulated for taking this issue on board. Certainly police forces and other areas are not doing so presently, and they need to.